So let's set it up anyway. So I, I'm going to see if I can do it now. So I'm going to. Okay. So I, I don't use this box, and I think people might be one reason that it's hard to see how I want it. But I, I'm going to do it in terms of x and y. That's x and y. And I'm going to add that up to the total number of coins, right? 39. Is that correct? As it says, there are 39 coins. So I'm gonna, I want, I want to solve it. There's, there's different ways you can do it. Then you can look at like, uh, how about the next thing? Now we're gonna talk about dollars. Well, we have seven dollars and fifty cents, right? Yes. So that's a second equation because we're gonna say that this is made up of. Uh, what do we got? The two coins of. Twenty-five cents. Times x. Plus, what? 0.10y, and that equals 750. 750. So, if we set these two equations up, now we know if we solve for substitution, I can take a y and put it right in that y, right? That's called substitution. Suppose I solve this for y. Right, and I subtract x plus 39. You see that? That is in the slope intercept form. What is the slope of this line? Negative 1. Because y equals mx plus b. Where b is the y intercept. Let's guess what m is. m is going to be the minus 1 in front of that x. That's what m is. It's the coefficient in front of the x. You don't see a one there, but there is one. Okay? So, all right. So I'm going to call this line one. All right. So now let's talk about line two. I'll do line two and three. You see, I'm going to multiply all this thing by, by 100, right? Just to move this over. Yes? Both sides? So I'm going to have 25 x plus 10y equals 750. Okay, I want it in this y equals mx plus a graph. I want it, this is what I want you to do with every single problem to be able to do it. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 25x. Is that okay for both sides? I'm, not, I'm going to skip that step. I'm just going to write, okay? So I'm going to write this as 10y equals minus 25x plus 750. Okay. So the end result, I'm going to divide this by 10, both sides. Right? I'm going to divide this by 10. You see it? And this whole side by 10. But because, because I can distribute it because it's a common denominator. So basically what you're going to have for the y, this y, it's going to be equal to, well, two, 25 divided by 10. You can leave it like that, or you can, or you can simplify it. Like 5 will go into that 5, right? And 5 will go into 10 twice. Hmm. Yeah, or 2.5. And then 10 goes into, remember, this, this goes under each one. Yeah. So now I'm going to call that line 2. All right. We're getting close now because we have it, both of them. By the way, this form that it's in right now, this form, with both variables on one side, is called a standard form. Okay? This x plus y is in standard form. Why do we care? Because the next way we're going to solve it is going to be using matrices, matrix. And we're going to use what's called linear programming. The way the computer finds where the x and y intercept. They do it with both variables on both sides. I'll show you. That's next. Um, next after I do the graphing of inequalities. Okay? So this is what I hope that you can look at a problem. You can set it up as two equations. You can graph those two equations and you can find the point of intersection. Now, with regards to the graph, um, let's take a look at that. Well, it's always the same almost always the same. I ask you for like red to find at least two points, right? Because two points define a line. So if you 
get a little chart of x and y. Okay, and I set x equal to zero. If I set x equal to zero, you should be able to read off what the y-intercept is. Let me tell you what y is when x equals zero. It's a hard one. When x equals zero, what is y? Thirty-nine. Yeah, don't you see? When x is equal to zero, zero plus thirty-nine is. I mean, this shouldn't be like a real brainstormer. Because if x equals zero, it's just a zero plus whatever it is. That is the y-intercept. This is the coordinate on the graph that represents the y-intercept. That is this coordinate. The next point you'd like to know is what happens if I stuff a zero up the y? This. Now, now I'm asking you to put zero here. You see? It's the same thing over and over and over. So if I put zero here, what do I have? Minus x, right? Plus 39. Okay, now how am I going to solve for x? I want x by itself. Yeah, I probably won't do that. I'll probably add because I like to keep my x's positive. So I'll just add an x, right? So I'll have x equals 39. Now, any idea why there's this kind of symmetry here? Notice that I have 0, 39, 39, 0. You know why it's kind of sim I mean, symmetric that way from this way, I mean. You know why it's exactly the same number, 39 and 39? Because this thing has a slope of negative 1. Anything that has a slope of 1, you go out 1, you go down 1. That's a 45 degree angle. You see what I'm saying? So wherever it is, as long as you have a 45 degree angle, right, then there's a y-intercept there. You see? So it's because it happens to have a slope of 1 that both the y-intercept and x-intercept has a transposed position. Um, let me get rid of that. Okay, now, back to here. Let's see. So we got y1 and y2, right? So let's graph it. Now, we didn't get the points yet for uh, for this guy here, right? Y2. What do I do? Exactly the same thing over and over. Is I've set up a little chart of x, y to get a coordinate system. And I ask, what is y when x is 0? Yeah. That's a major breakthrough there. Okay, now the other question is what happens when I set y equals 0? Now, would you expect this side to be 75? No. Probably not because it's a slope of you run 2 and go up 5. Do you see what I'm saying? So now I'm going to set that equal to 0. 0 equals, uh, you could call it 2.5 or whatever. You know, uh, so here I have 5 halves, right? x plus 75. And I might, now in this case I will, I just, uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, okay? Just to get rid of this denominator, I could, I mean, I could do it by 2 fifths if you want, but just to keep it simple. I'm going to multiply by 2, but you have to multiply this whole side by 2. Right, so when the 2 comes over here, there's no reason to multiply it times the 5. You can, but the 2's will divide out. So 2 times 0 is 0. Do you see that? And that's going to be equal to 5x plus 150, because I got 2 times 75, right? Shouldn't that be a negative 5? Negative 5? Because down there it's negative 2, 5x plus 75. Yeah, it is, huh? This should be, right? And that should be, okay? So in that case, 
to get the x by itself, I'm not going to subtract 150. I want positive x's. You, you can do it the other way, but less mistakes this way. So I'm going to add 5x to both sides. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get what? I got 5x on this side, correct? Or is it? I added 5x, right? So you Equals 150, right? Mm -hmm. So solving for x, I divide both sides by 5, right? Mm -hmm. So that's 30. Mm -hmm. So that goes here. Okay. So that should be enough to graph those two lines. You have to know that much to know graphing. So, uh, okay, somebody, somebody has this written down in this first and second line. Okay, let's see. Oh, I, I gotta go back to here. Let's see. I'll get it. Uh, okay. Oh, it's right here. Let me try this guy. I'll try this again. Okay. All right, so what was the first line? No, this has to be starts with y equals m equals c, so it has to be a y. There are two lines, so one or the other. Did I really forget the two lines? Y equals <clears throat> negative x plus 35. Okay, y equals negative x. Negative x. This is probably not the most efficient x. Plus 39. Mm -hmm. So I have a plus 39. Uh, okay. Now, uh, what happens to the version? Okay. X goes to, remember what our points were? We're plus and minus 39. Do you remember? A 0, 39. And 0, 39. <coughs> yeah. So, I should be able to zoom out. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm not sure if I can grab it. Yeah. <coughs> Guess what point this is right here? This point is. Where does it say? Well, anyway, x is 0 and y is 39, right? And this point is. There it is. 39, 0. And this point was 039. Now, I'm leaving it to you to learn how to point, make a dot there and a dot there to connect the two lines. So, uh, with that, uh, okay. And I know that this one was y equals, right? y equals, and it was minus, well, we can put 2.5 if we want, makes it easier, minus 2.5, what is that, well, it was 2.5x, right, uh, okay, and then it was plus what? That's the second line. So you have to know what the line is that was. Remember we saw for we have y equals negative two point five x That's what I got. And that's seventy-five. Plus seventy-five. Okay. Okay. There. So now we have blue line and red line. That point is the solution to the problem of pennies, not quarters, and time. Well, that's pretty cool. You got a geometric interpretation of it. So, um, you know, how do we find that point? Well, that point would be right there. You can hit it with this and get the answer. But you're not allowed. You won't have it. So, anyhow. So what do we do? Well, let's see. If I go like this, uh, oh, that's nice. That's good. I mean, kind of. 
So anyway, the point here that I'm interested in is, uh, you know, our two equations really. And I don't need any of that. And I don't need any of that, actually. Okay. See? Now that teacher can't complain I left anything on the board. All right. Now, I have two equations. And I have, you know, two variables, two equations. So, what you got to realize is that red line, right? This is red line. And this is blue line. There's only one place in the whole universe where they're going to share the same. Oops. Okay. The same, you know, that's a 75. The same point here. That point is right underneath here. That X guy value here, we call it X critical value. We're looking for that. And with that, once we have that, we can go over here and find the Y critical value. So what I'm saying is that these two lines, in this case, Y1, okay, equals the other line only at that spot. So I'm going to call that other spot a blue line since it's blue. I'll call it Y2. You see that? Now, Y1, if you want, you can think of it as Y1 has a new name. You can call me Y1 or you can call me, I'm not sure what that is, but you can call me minus X plus 39. You see that? So all I'm doing is setting the lines to each other. Are, are you getting it? In the back row too? Yeah? Okay, so what am I doing? I'm just replacing Y1 because I know the only points they meet will be where I'm looking for. So I'm going to replace Y1 with minus X plus 39. And I'm going to take y2, and I'm going to replace it with what it equals to. y2 is what I have here on the green line, which is 5 as x plus 75. You get it? So all I really need to do is solve for x. When you solve for x, you found the solution for how many quarters. And you can plug in that. Once you got the x, you can plug it in here like Peter Cotter, or, or here, to get the Y. So, in this case, you know, I might as well multiply by 2. Is that okay? Both sides. But I'm going to have to distribute the 2. Do you see it? Or do you want me to do it, or do you want me to go skip it? or Do you want to see it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. All right, that's what I like to hear. Let's see. Let me see what color can I use here. Well, I guess that's it. So anyway, I'm going to go right here, and I'm multiplying by 2, really, to get rid of this denominator. All of this work is to get rid of 2. So when I have that, you see that I'm going to have, in the red, I'm going to have minus 2x, right, plus, and this is going to be like 40, right, uh, like 80, take away 2, so it's like, 78, right? Then I have, see, I'm trying to keep my color clear. And now I'm going to bring this 2 in. So the 2, when it comes in like this, you see it's going to sit right by the 5. You can multiply, you know, 5 times 2 and 10 and then divide it by 2, but it's still going to end up just being 5x, right? But then I have to bring in this one. Plus, well, that's not right. Uh, you got 150, right? Not 715. Let's see if I can use a T. There we go. That's pretty cool. Okay, you see how easy that looks now? 
Now, which x am I going to work on? I'm going to work on the one that has the fewest x, right? So, yeah. So, I'm going to add a 2x here, and I'm going to add a 2x here. I'm adding those two x's. So, that just leaves me 78, right? Equals 7x plus 150. Hmm. Oh, did I forget my negative here again? Okay, somebody. Somebody. Okay. Here we go. Let's see. I'm going to use this one. Okay. So, this time I'm going to work on the 5x side, right? Because it's more negative. So, instead of 2x, I'm going to add a 5x. I'm going to add a 5x, so what do I get left here? Uh, 3x. Right. Plus 78 equals 150. So I'm going to subtract 78, right? From both sides. Right? It was, so on this side I have just 3x left, right? So 80, 80, so 80 and, uh, 80, 80, 80 and 70, so 70, so 60, what well, else, I'm going to have 2 there, and that's going to bring up to 4, right, 7, plus 2, we're good, okay. So now I'm going to take 3x and divide it by 3, and then I'll have 72 divided by 3. Okay. So that's what 21? Huh? Should be 24. 24. Oh, yeah. Guess what? I just found out this is a critical value. That's this point right here. And then that looks pretty close. See, that's 24. And this right here is 25. So it's a little bit below that. So I can then decide, you know, where I want to, now that I got my x, I can decide where to get my y. I can put my x here, or I can put my x here. If I put my x here, then my y critical value will be equal to what? Well, I'm going to put in my x now equal to minus 24 plus 39, right? So what do I have? Like, so I have you know, 6 and 9, 15. Okay. Let me see. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that I have the solution to the problem is right here, which should be right here. Oh, right there. Is that right? Did I have 2415? Yeah. Okay, so now, to check it uh, with the word problem, and that one was here. All right, so now I want to check it. Uh, so, it's easy enough, because remember that I had x, plus y, the quarters and the nickels, add up to 39, correct? So x, in this case, you know, and x is the way we're we calling it. We were calling the number of quarters, right? So what was that, 24? Yeah. 24 plus y, we're saying had to equal 39. And we did. We got a y of 15. So that came out okay, right? Check. The other one is the money. Remember, we had 10 cents times the number, well, 25 cents times the number of quarters, right? So did that come out to 500? Let's see. So I have now 25 
multiply times 20 plus 4. So what's that? Okay, so that's not right. 500. And then? Okay, so it's 600. So, uh, so we have 600 pennies here, right? And now, what? This is dimes, right? So we have 15 dimes. So 15 dimes is a dollar fifty, remember? And that did come out to a total of 750 pennies. Now, the, I put that in what equation? When I put it in was, I had 25, you know, times x plus. I had 10 cents times y equals 750. So all the what I did is I plugged in x here, which is 24, right? And I plugged y, which was 15. That's how I got this. I, that's how I got the 600. I plugged in here, 24 plus, and then over here I plugged in. You know, for Y, I plugged in 15. That's how I got the 150. I don't know, it's kind of messy. But remember, we started out with this in the standard form, and this was the second one. So I'm just checking to see if the answers are right. I know they are because it came out. I'm pretty sure it came out because it came out graphically. Did you see that? Any questions on that one? Too easy? That's what I've been telling you. It's too easy. Okay, so let's clear that. And let's try the other problem. Um, make the screen smaller? In a Word document? The white screen. Yeah. Oh, well, I can just use a white screen. I go like that. I just don't. I thought I did. There. I mean, if you want white, I was just trying to kind of preserve the problem here. That's okay. We can do it from here. Um, so the next problem, let's take a look at it. That was uh, this one. Okay, I can't do it now. Uh, here. Okay, that was this one. Okay. So look, look, it's, it's the same thing. Okay, he's got stamps. Right? And this is how much he spent total, yeah? yeah. And this is, uh, he bought uh, 56 stamps. This is the total number. They changed the order, but it's the same thing. Because you have to know the total number of count stamps, and you have to know the total money spent. Because then you can set up the equation. And I'll just set the equation up this time so you can see that in the one line, does that work? Yeah. Okay, so in the one line, if I'm just talking about counts, I'm going to have two types of stamps. I'm going to call it an X stamp plus a Y stamp. You realize I'm just talking about the number of stamps. That equals 56. You're always going to have to have two categories. One is going to be, remember the acid, the strength of the acid, or the total number of liters. This is like the total number of liters. And guess what the other one's going to be? Well, the other equation, and by the way, this is standard form. You need to put that in y equals mx plus b form, right? Okay, so this other one's going to be, now we're talking about money. We're going to have, uh, we're going to call 39 cents. 39, we'll call that the X plus. And then what do we have now? 24 cents, right? Y is going to be equal to what? 1944, right? Of which I could multiply this by 100. Yeah? And what do you do? You get y by itself. You find those two points. You graph it. You find where they intersect. Okay? 
How about this one? Same setup. A newspaper advertised DVDs and CDs. Okay, and he bought each. Don't know. One for uh, and and bought each of her seven nephews a gift, either DVD or the DVD of the movie Million Dollar Baby or the latest whatever CD. Okay, so what do we have? We have a CD or DVD, don't we? Do we? Those are the two things. Well, I can call them X and Y. So how many total? Well, how many total things that you're going to buy? Yeah. Right? So right off the bat, you know the line for that is y equals minus x plus 7, which is super easy to grasp. Okay, now the next one's going to talk about money, right? So what do we have? We have one of them, let's say uh, one of them is 1495, and the other one's 1688, right? Let me see. Uh, so I have 14.95 times x plus, now and the other one is going to be 1688. Y equals the total number amount spent. Well, the total amount of spent's right there. 104.3. All right, set those two. Okay. Now. If I, uh, I hope you got that. It's still there. Okay, this guy. Look how it's the same pattern. So this guy saw the ad mentioned in 19. Oh, did we even look? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, this one? Where's the 1388 come out of? I didn't use 1388 here, did I? No, but it's right there after the other 1388. Because it used to be 1495. Okay, anyway. Uh, he too went shopping. And he bought, so it's the same thing, but he has five nieces. Right? So it becomes boring almost. Because we have. Oh. What do we have? Same thing, right? X plus Y. Equals how many? Yeah. There it is. See? And the other one's again. Now it's what? Well, we know how much they spent. Looks like 70 51, right? And, and then again, we said that uh, whatever is 1499 x plus 1388 y. Done. I say done, but still has to. Okay. Yeah. How about this one? Now, this is like a teeter totter one. So the way we used to do it was substitution with this, but we can we can still come up, say, look, there are two investments. Right? Uh, and they want to know how much he has invested in each one. So we know that one of these deals, let's see, we know that one of these deals is at 5%, or 
or 0 0.05 of X, right? And the other investment's earning, oh, uh-oh. Well, I'm going to say, where did I come up with five? I'm going to call that three because I'm the instructor. <laughs> I can call it whatever I want. Just kidding. All right. So, what do I have? I'm going to say that's, I don't know. Well, you guys probably tell in your book. I mean, oh, wait a minute. Can I just move it over? <laughs> no. Okay, so one's, uh, where am I at? Here? Okay, so one is five, huh? Yeah. And the other one? Oh, it is four. Okay, I don't know what's my problem. Okay, I don't know. So it's easy enough because we got, uh, so one's at five percent, so 0 0.05x plus point. And that equals 350. $350. That's how much interest they got off of each investment. No? And the other one is, well, it's a teeter-totter. Let's take a look at that because here it says teeter-totter. Why? Because she has twice as much money in 5%, so we're calling X. You agree? So she has more money in X than she does in Y investment. Do you see that? It's a Peter totter It says so. How much does she have more? She has twice as much. So do you see I have to build up the Y? By how much? What do I have to do to Y to make it balance? No? Huh? Yeah. So X will be equal to 2 times Y. Okay. That is a balanced teeter-totter. But it's also your second line. This is what freaked a lot of people out. So let's take a look at that. Now, let's see if I can go to here. Let's see, am I, am I okay? No. Try touching what? The color. The color? Which color? Oh. Uh, let's see. Uh, is there a way of? I don't know if there's a way of call. Anyway. So. Anyhow, on this one here, remember I want I want to get y by itself. So let me write it like this: two y equals x. I'm going to divide both sides by two, okay? So I have y equals, and I can write that as x over two. Plus, guess what my y-intercept is? Well, there isn't any. Well, there is a zero. But this is in the form y equals mx plus b. And you can see it if I write it as y equals one half x. That's what I want you to graph. And that freaks people out. I'm not sure why. But one of the reasons it does is, I think, is because it has both the zero and the x-intercept go to the zero. So look what happens if you set up a little table here. Well, when x equals 0, right, what is y? This is 2, by the way. Zero. That's right. Now, guess what happens if I set y equal to 0? Now, I multiply both sides by 2, right? So what I have is 0 equals whatever, x over 2, right? So if I multiply both sides by 2, do you see that? 2's divide out, but it's still equal to 0. So that's not a lot of help. So what might I do? Well, I could pick another point. Remember, you're the, like the god here. So you can say, what if x is 2? What is y? Well, if I put 2 in here, right? You see what y is going to be? 
Huh? Yeah. So now, you know, I can graph that point. So now, I can multiply the top one, you know, right, too. I mean, it's the same thing over and over, right? But I have to solve for y, right? And remember, in the end, you'll be setting the two lines equal to each other. This is one line right here. So what does that look like? For every two steps, you go up one. So you go two, one, two, one. So it's going to look like relatively, relatively flat, right? Because it's not going up too high. It's going two for one, two for one. This other one here, if I wanted to solve for it, let's say I multiply everything by 100, right? Yeah? So I would have 5x plus 4y equals, what, 3,500? Uh, no, I had to multiply, so I got another zero. So I have to add two zeros to the 100. Okay. Now, I'm going to get the, right, I want a y by itself. So watch. So I'm going to subtract 5x, okay? I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. Okay, if I do that, now I got almost got it in the way I want. Now I have minus 5x plus 35 thousand. Uh, okay. Do you see, in order for me to get the y by itself, I'm going to have to divide by 4. So my second line is a little more complicated, but it's going to be y equals, I'm going to have 5x divided by right and then I'm going to have 35,000 divided by 4 right so 35 goes into what 9 times 45 9 times 80 so 4 goes into 35 4 goes into 350 4 goes what 8 9 Eight times, and then that's that's going to be thirty. Hmm. Well, it's going to be thirty-five thousand. So I don't know. You get the idea. It's going to be eight times four, thirty-two. Bring it down. Then what does it go? Eight thousand seven hundred and fifty. Okay. So eight thousand seven hundred. Okay, so that's line two. And that five is negative. Is it? The negative five x, right? Yeah. So, um, so I was right here. It's negative, right? So when I divide it by four, this is going to be. So it's going to be a negative slope, right? So it's going to go four and go five down. So it's a little steeper. So, let's see, if you have it written down, let's see what it looks like. Mm. Okay, so what's this one equal to? Um, what was that one, do you remember? Either one, either line, what was it? When we know it was five fourths? Five divided by four. Yeah. So uh, five divided by four. Yeah. I wonder how they do that. <laughs> Let's see. So I'm going to have five divided by four. And this was what plus. Uh, this was plus. Uh, Eight thousand seven hundred fifty. That look right. So, see how that x shifted down? It should not. But that's just the nature of the thing. And this other one was what? Uh, now, uh, wait a minute. I got a mess. 
What's this here? Oh, that's a parentheses? Oh, I don't want this parentheses, do I? I'm not sure how I got that parentheses. Uh, well, why, why wouldn't it let me do that? Actually, if it's going to let me do that, I, I guess the fraction is kind of cool. Let me see. I could just get rid of that. There. That looks better. Okay, now the second line was what? There, we didn't get rid of now. That was, uh, let me see. That one was one that we were doing. Um, and that was the investments, right? So x plus y added up to 350. So all I have to do here is uh, x plus y was equal to 350, so I subtract an x, right? Is that correct? And I change this one to uh, 350. Oh, that's interesting. What happened there? Okay, minus x, right? Just x. Okay. Now, plus. Three fifty. Mm -hmm. All right, so I can tell that you know my y-intercepts are already pretty far up, right? So mm -hmm. there's an issue of scale. So let's see if I should be able to there. Uh, now that one is a y-intercept of three fifty. Remember. But something's wrong with my calculation here because the other one's 8,000. They're not intersecting in the right place. They're intersecting probably down here, huh? So what's wrong with the calculation? Are you sure it was minus 5? Okay, let's go back. Maybe you screwed me up. Let's see. I have to blame somebody. Okay, uh, did I have the thing here? I don't know. Did it get rid of all my stuff? I don't know. Ah. Okay, now. It was negative, wasn't it? Y equals 0 0.04. Right? Uh, wait a minute, what was this equation? Yeah. That's one equation, right? What was the other equation I got? This one? Do I have two different problems in there? So equation one is, um, well, am I doing this one here with a five? Yeah, I think so too. Oh no, that was the investments, right? So that's gone. That's why I'm confused, okay. Uh, this whole thing is no longer. Okay. This one is, however, was minus 5 fourths. Uh, so the other one, yeah, the other one is equal to x over 2, right? Okay. So, uh, I want to go back. What do I want to do? Go back. Uh, Oh, here. Oh, I know. See, I just needed to get rid of this, don't I? No. See, where was it? Uh, right here. Yeah. So, that was, I don't know where I got this number. Uh, I thought we were doing two investments, but I, I guess it was, uh, anyway. 
and this other one was x divided by 2, wasn't it? So let's do it. That's interesting. Oh. Is it minus one half? Or is, uh, no, not negative, is it? Right, because y, Peter taught her y x. Didn't we multiply by two? Oh yeah, that's right, because I had to turn it around. Okay. Because if you recall. Um, I believe what I had before was that x was the bigger one. And we had to remember multiply 2 y by 2. So there's actually no negative sign here. There. Now I feel better. So uh, look at what the y intercept is here. It's 0, isn't it? It goes right to 0. Remember that one step where I put x equals to 2? Can't hardly do it because the first step is 5,000. So drawing to scale is always can be a part of a challenge. So this guy here is going to have a y-intercept of what? 8,750? I can do that. Eight thousand seven hundred fifty, And this guy here was if we set y equal to 0, it's equal to that. 1,000. Okay, now that part there is going to be the solution. What do I do? I set these two guys equal to each other. Yes? Right? And I solve for x. I solve for x. I'm just setting the two equal to each other. So x over 2 is going to be equal to minus 5 fourths. I'm bringing the x back up where it should be. Over 4 plus 8,750. Now, to get rid of the 4 and the 2, I can multiply both sides by 4. Correct? So I'm going to multiply by 4 here. And I'm going to multiply this whole side, to be fair, by 4. So this is going to just leave me 2x here, right? And when the 4 comes over here, you know, the 4 will divide into it. So I'm not going to bother dividing, multiplying times 5. So I'm going to have minus 5x plus 8,750, right? So I'm going to work on the side that has the fewest amount of x's. So I'm going to add 5x and add 5x. Okay, what does that give me over here? Good. And what's that equal to? Right. Let's see. Uh, you can see. Okay. Minus five x And so I'm going to divide both sides by seven, right? So that goes in what? One time? And then two times, I don't know, you have a good 1,250. 1,250. That doesn't look reasonable. It does not look reasonable, does it? Oh, ho, ho, ho. yeah, look. A mistake for not step by step. So, what am I going to multiply? Oh, you got it on your calculator? Yes, 35,000. Oh, yeah. We did that before. So, I'm going to have a smaller ring. And then I'm going to the bottom one, too. Oh, yeah? And all of it. And that's going to be? Uh, what is it? Plus 35,000? Yep. And then 7 goes into 35. Yeah. What? 
five thousand. Yeah. Now, does that look reasonable? Oh, it kind of does. Look. Look at that. Look where it's under. How about to find this guy? Well, look at this equation here. This looks like the easiest one. Well, x is equal to 5,000. If x equals to 5,000, guess what y equals to? Twenty-five hundred. So that that look at the between zero and five thousand. Look at it. As a matter of fact, if I go here, I guess I didn't have the. Am I off? Yeah. Oh, it did it for me. Cool. What do you think? I'm trying to get it so that it's not brainwashing into your part there. Come back. On. Okay, now on Tuesday, we're going to have this guy come in, the vice president of the shrimp company. And he's going to review me. And so hopefully, uh, things will work. Um, I've been working on getting everything online now, so that you and your grades and everything. Tuesday or Monday? Monday. Tuesday, Sunday, Thursday. Monday. So if you can't solve those problems, go get help. Nobody in this class has come to the office hours ever. Either I have them on now, or you're all so superior and intelligent. So, yeah. well, I have a question. Okay. You get these two equations that are supposed to be equal uh, y and z. Does it matter which equation is which um, line? Um, well, once you assign it, like when you, you can pick x and y. Let's say the question again, doesn't matter what. Okay, so you pick out the two equations yeah. that equal uh, y1 and y2. Does it matter which equation is y1 or y2? No. Okay. No, because you're going to intersect. What might matter is that if we say we call x quarters, like x is a quarter so it's three, maybe we change it around the other one. We have to, x has to keep representing. As a matter of fact, you can actually sketch the way you could solve for x in terms of y and it still work, but that's not how we like you can't tell what the slope is. So you your office hours with what three to five thirty? Yeah. Uh, well it's uh well it's three thirty to five thirty. Three thirty to five thirty. Yeah. But I you know, I don't ask supposed to be here after Yeah. Math class goes all the way till nine. Jeez. Or eight. In, in the old days, I used to force you guys to turn it up. <laughs> so you're learning twice as much. And now, it's like, so and most of you aren't in the middle of that one. But it's my job to do it. So before class, after class, math lab over here. We have so many math lab teachers, we have more lab people than students. Are. Somebody's suggesting we raise tuition. I mean, people will study harder. What do you think? No, I don't know. Because, because because then you know, well, it's so it's so cheap. You don't even have to buy books now. So you can just whatever like pass it off. It's not even possible. Now well, this is the third time I've taken this, so I got to pass it. Oh, I see. Or I can't. <laughs> That's my motivation. Oh, it's just it doesn't matter.
And a lot of them are like surprisingly neat in the way they write. I have one guy that writes and I'm like, you know what a kite is? You know what a kite? A Chinese person. A kite is like a little piece of paper that's folded up like a kite, like a little kite. And then they can like toss it under the door to another jail. It's like a kite sliding over the floor. And that's how they pass communication from one to the other. So they're necessarily, you know, have to write pretty small. So it's comes up pretty cool, but you're doing the homework. It's like you can make a kite out of it. Yeah, that's what I call it. It's a cool, cool kite. I call it kite style. So, I guess that's it for the first half. Okay. So. Oh, you might want to use that graph too. It's free. If you want to actually use a computer. Oh, thanks. Is it, huh? Is it ASCO 50? I forget. On one of them, it was saying to put it in a drafting calculator. Oh, well, here's one online. Yeah. Uh, that reminds me. I, I had an actual graphing calculator, and I couldn't figure it out. So I got lucky in half. Because I just. Somebody had a what? I had to learn like an app. Oh. 